I mean, you know it's a bad day when you have to give your genitals an oatmeal bath. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I know what you mean. You know? Oh, I know what oh you, uh, okay. What you well, you know what? We'll share tips after the show. Oh, That's welcome so back to Security <laughs> Weekly, everyone. Sorry, Jack and I were... But, so, so Paul, I mean, you you gotta, you've got to fight genital cholesterol somehow. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul, you know it's an even worse day when I have to give your genitals a bath. <laughs> yeah, me a bath. <laughs> I don't want to see, see that. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back, everyone, to Film Security 11. Weekly. <laughs> um, we this, this segment is actually sponsored by... Tenable Network Security, they're hiring. Everyone from programmers to researchers, check out all of their available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. If you're listening to this show, make sure you check out the 60 plus engineering type positions they have available. Some are work from home, some require you be in Columbia, Maryland, so make sure you check out securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. And hey, it, mm. about work for the, the remote, Yes, uh, the questions come up uh, from a listener and others. Uh, just how remote can you be? Mm. And uh, that would be a U.S. or Canadian citizen. So Puerto Rico But if you're a U.S. citizen cool. and you're in another country, is that... I meant to ask that. That's oh that situation man. So, came okay, up. There's there's another question, but yeah. yes, um, at this time, uh, Canada and um, you know, so obviously, as uh, as Carlos will attest, uh, in Puerto Rico counts, uh, uh, and we do have offices in other parts of the world, but they're primarily sales, sales engineering, marketing, right. those sort of things. We have plenty of those roles. Uh, the SE uh, roles, I'm not sure how many overseas sales engineer roles we have, but I'm sure there are a few of those. That's an engineering role, and it's um, more engineering than sales, but it is supporting the sales team. So if you're you're outside uh, North America and interested, we've got those. And as long as we're doing it, we'll be, uh, Tenable will be participating in the career fair. Uh, not career fair, the career track <coughs> at Besides Vegas besides in Vegas. a few weeks. So. Excellent. We're also sponsored by Black Hills Information Security. The leaders in penetration testing and active defense email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. Visit Tenable.com for more information. And we're back. With Apollo, did you make drinks for the production staff, or they they don't count? Of course not. (laughs) I'll make them. I'll make them one later. Don't worry. Okay. Here's your vodka rocks, guys. Enjoy. Just just put it. (laughs) Yeah, you didn't make me a drink. I mean, put a speed pour in a bottle of Jack Daniels, and they can just take turns. Oh, there we go. Straight out of the nipple. Just give them a bottle of Jack. That's yeah. (laughs) Um, So, what are we talking about for stories? Where do you guys want to start? So should we just things. dive right into uh, which one? We, we, should we just dive into one of the big ones? Um, oh, you got to go. S, you got to go SSL TLS first. Why not? So, oh. well, I, I said we should go into the one of the big ones, not a overhyped non-story. <laughs> <laughs> Hacking team. Oh yeah. So, all right. Let's let's talk about the poor open SSL. Right. It's um, okay. We'll start with SSL. What's is so? I can is it, like, oh, it's got another bug. I mean. That sucks. Move right. on. It now is, it's not news, right? I mean, it was news when it had the first bug, but now I feel like, yeah, it's just open SSL again. Y- yeah. It's kind of like Adobe it's, it's Zero got days. Some, it, it does, it's got an interesting attack angle. It is a. It's a clever. Is it like a forty-five or a ninety? Bug, yeah, it's 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 got a. It's a clever bug, but it's um, not. You know, it doesn't affect a lot of mainstream distributions. It's not a problem for most people. If it's a problem for you, you need to fix it. Uh, don't don't panic. You know where your open SSL systems are. You know it's not like a lot of people use certificates. But the 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 high level view of what happens is they don't validate certificate chains well, and therefore any valid certificate can you be used to sign another certificate, and uh, the certificate validation won't validate that that first certificate was actually a CA and it's not, and so you. Everybody gets to be a CA if you've, uh, yeah, it is basically. In a, Canada, is that a CA? A? A, CA. CA. That's my CAA, Canadian. That's the Canadian. It's my Canadian automobile. joke I stole, I think, from Mike Poor. Uh, but anyway, so. What anyway. is Larry doing out there? Larry's in anonymous mode. Yeah, he's, 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 
is anyway, anonymous. so it's it's not. I mean, it's not fun if this impacts you. It's it, even if you have vulnerable systems. How much are you doing that that um, certificate based off? So, but fix it. You know where the stuff is in your environment. Fix it. It's not hype. It is. It is clever one. It's also one you know, Google found, as I believe. Is this one we should fix, or mm -hmm. one that we lump into that gigantic category of vulnerabilities that we're like we should just we're never going to fix oh. those because we're never going to get to them. I I think that uh, Carlos. Grenade, I, I think that Carlos needs to. Uh, he's got a, a deeper depth on this one, but and uh, w w when you look at this bug, first of all. You look at all of the Linux distributions that are out there. Only Ubuntu version 15, which is in beta, yep. is affected, and Arc Linux. No other distribution right now is shipping with this version of, uh, of of this vulnerable version of OpenSSL. If you're running Arc Linux or you're running the latest version of Ubuntu 15, and you're vulnerable to it. The repos have been updated. You just need to uh, update and patch. You will be affected if you have a web server that it's actually validating the client certificate. Because what will happen is uh, you're the web server, you're set up for client off. Here comes a connection, um, and you go, okay, give me your certificate. I need to validate your certificate. What you can actually do is in your validation, you can actually include as part of your branch your own CA certificate for your certificate, and it just branches off, takes that certificate, uh, that CA certificate to one that it has to use for the validation, and it validates you against it. So you're actually providing your certificate, which is signed with your own CA, plus your CA certificate to the connection, bypassing the authentication. But as mentioned, are you going to be impacted if you're running an Amazon or if you're running one of the regular distributions? No. Now, are you one of those dumb heads that actually decide to compile your own version of the latest software on all of your web servers and everything that you're using? Damn, dude, I admire you. I don't know how you keep track of all of those packages and know what to update. We got to talk more, Carlos. <laughs> so, um, Carlos, that's a great, great summary. Um, and um, y you did mention that uh, it would. Uh, to be vulnerable would require uh, you to be doing client-based auth, which essentially is mutual auth. So just for the listeners, most web resources on the net um, are doing just server-side uh, <coughs> TLS, where the server server's delivering a, delivering a certificate out, and uh, the, the client uh, is not um, required to deliver a, a certificate uh, as part of that authentication. There's no, no mutual authentication requirement. So... Uh, just, just to um, clarify that. And, and, and when you look at it, most people are actually authenticating using basic auth. It's kind of like the typical one over SSL. All right. You authenticate to it. And typically, most of the regular web apps nowadays, what they'll give you is they give you a session key, either via a cookie or a value that you actually have to use in your next request. I actually started uh, after... One of the latest podcasts where I mentioned that I didn't know a lot about web stuff, I decided to, hey, it would be good if I built my own web uh, web app and start dealing with sessions and RESTful APIs and start learning a bit about it. So I started studying on it. And um, yeah, uh, very, 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 very few people actually out there use client off their web applications. And those that do tend to be DOD, federal government, a couple of military contractors, well, no, and no they one like the, their old no one solid wants the certificate. of Linux. I think that's because no one wants the certificate management, Carlos, when you have that, that client, because the client has to have a certificate in order to authenticate. But it's totally worth it, because our certificate authority infrastructure is bulletproof, so... And Windows is actually easy, because you can actually uh, use GPOs yes. to I was, set I was, up everything up for you. Mm -hmm. In the Linux exactly. environment, yeah. which is what is being impacted here. That's, as you mentioned, that's hard. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, I have a lot of friends that are um, Linux geeks that tell me, I oh, know I can pull off my packages, man. I'm going like, oh, cool, dude. How many <laughs> servers do you manage? <laughs> Two, three. Okay, let's think that you're an enterprise and you have 50, 80 
a couple hundred servers. Thousands. Are you going to be compiling all of your packages? Mm -hmm. Then how do you know which ones should you upgrade? Are you going to start compiling them again and then deploying them? No, everybody actually decides, let's make our life easier. Jump, APT, Chef, Puppet actually make all of my life a lot easier with all, all of the management infrastructure, Red Hat Satellite. I can distribute my packages. Let's just use packages. And if you're one of those guys that don't like that pain and actually use the standard packages of your distros, you're not going to be affected unless you're using the latest and greatest version of Ubuntu or Arc Linux right now. Which, which actually means unless you're actually a legend in your own mind. Um, but I want to reinforce that um, issue, um, not issue, I reinforce the client auth um, uh, scenario because um, I have seen client auth in, in my encount encounters and some testing, but it's usually in enterprise environments that are distributing certificates directly to Windows-based workstations. Right. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the, the PKI uh, in, in a Windows-centric world is actually pretty well developed. I agree. Uh, and so they can actually get away with that. Um, in most other spaces, certainly on the public Internet, you don't often see mm -hmm. client authentication deployed. So. Do we see hackers getting set free? <laughs> do we see? Do we see that? Did you guys see Basically, this? Basically, yeah. I mean, yeah. essentially. It's like, it's like Look, one year so probation. So there's, <clears throat> there, uh, there seems to be some inconsistency across countries in the way they treat criminal hacking and cyber crime and things like that. Because in the U.S., we we sort of want to um, draw and quarter children for screwing around with stuff or suppress folks like Barrett Brown and just, you know, just stunning penalties applied on things that really don't hold up. But yeah, if there's been a lot of cases Jack, in the we U.S. where we've gone... we people in jail for not paying their, their dog license fees, right? So, I mean, we're, we're a little yeah, jail yeah, well, happy that's, in this well, country. Well, I, I think, a little, uh, but uh, we're not going to But I think we go the in the opposite right. direction right. than so, Finland. And, now, now, right. and, yeah. then, and so I was just saying, there's a little problem with balance because on the yeah. other hand, I mean, I can't imagine any rational country taking somebody that had popped 50,000 servers and run card scams and, and swatting and, and swatting and uh, you know just a horrible human being uh, getting effectively a, a slap on the wrist. I mean right. nobody would be that except finished, for they? Finland. Fucking Finland. Do you ever well, see that video? Larry, what did that video is from? Yeah, good vodka, dude. No, <laughs> that's a reference to what was that show, Larry, where he was talking about the, the worm that went around on Bluetooth phones. Did Josh uh, ever show you that? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's uh, Kabir. Yeah, the Kabir worm. Uh, the one. Who's the, co the comedian that was talking about it? It was another, not Colbert, but who came who was before Colbert, uh, though? Who was the guy? Stewart? Yeah. John Stewart? It was John, I think it was John Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. It was like Finland. Fucking, fucking Finland. Finland. Yeah, See, wow. we should be playing that clip right now. Yeah, we should be because um, that's a really interesting turn of Yeah, that. that's, um, <laughs> that's obscure as fuck and no one cares. Uh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I guess... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> well, it was. Yes, now, now it, it, and was this reporting is, um, on it. No, and this is. I mean, this is like I said. This is not. This is not a kid who went a little astray. This is. We're talking lizard squad leader, right? You know, one of the. Well, I don't know if he was a leader, but he was, he was a lizard affiliate. squad, and he, he was, was a member. Now, now, a member of lizard squad. Fairness, now, Krebs is reporting on this. Now, realize Krebs is a bit biased on this story because it was Lizard Squad's DDoS botnet that took advantage of home routers that took down Krebs' website. Right, right. But so he doesn't have necessarily now, nice things to We do have to remember to there is one thing about this that I think is accurate if they took it to the extreme, which is at 17, they're not going to convict him as an adult mm. for a nonviolent crime. Right. Uh, I do think that, what was it? 8,000 euro? It was 6,558 Euro, so in a two-year like suspended grand. sentence. Two-year suspended sentence, right? It, it um, you know, it seems that maybe a little bit more than that's called for for somebody with that scale of crime. He was uh, exploiting Cold Fusion web applications. Oh yeah, there. that's it. He's the one that like <laughs> blasted yeah. fifty thousand Cold Fusion boxes or something. So, yeah, yeah. so basically, the dream of the '90s was still alive. <laughs> well, Cold Fusion is like the low the dream or the nightmare. Like um. all those like Turkish and Estonian group, mostly Turkish groups that like have a race to see how many web pages they can deface so they can be elite. They'll just target Cold Fusion because 
chances are there's a vulnerability for cold fusion. It's Whoever's picking running up, cold fusion the never servers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, there, there definitely is kind of a really interesting parallel between uh, this story and many other stories that we read about teenagers doing stupid things. Uh, I just searched for just to... to wait, wait, uh, wait. I got to point out that the phrase teenagers doing stupid things is a redundant phrase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just teenagers doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is the truth. It's, uh, it's good to be accurate, <laughs> I guess. Uh, uh, so if you Google right now, uh, hacker, 17-year-old, tried as an adult, there are numerous articles that come up of kids who did way less than take over 50,000 servers being tried as adults in the United States. I just find that a very interesting parallel to a kid who was obviously incredibly malicious being really slapped on the wrist. These kids I, are going I, to prison I, for taking I, down I, I a just school Googled, website. I not just Cameron, Googled uh, enough, teenagers <laughs> doing dumb things, and I came up with a whole <laughs> different... <laughs> never mind. You broke the internet. <laughs> You found oh, Reddit. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I mean, there, there's examples of kids who are as young as 15 being tried as an adult. It, it's, it, I, don't, uh, I don't understand. All right, but so, so hold on for a second. Us. Go ahead, Mike. What is wrong with us? Seriously. What's wrong Try with us is we're, we're focusing on a single case and we're conflating it to be everything. We, we seem to yeah. do this all the time. Yeah. It goes one way or the other. So we're either chilling research or we're setting everybody free and, and burning the internet down. How about reality is we're not doing either. We're picking edge cases and glorifying them and giving them a lot more time than they should have. Plus one I, I actually game. disagree. The, the, what we oh, do shocker. In the US, I, I knew our agreement, <laughs> our, our detente would I only think last that, a week, I, I think that there tends to be, uh, there's some validity in what you say, you know, amazingly enough. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Oh, you got you, mildly you, stupid. I'm you like got a millipede of that. But um, I, I think that the U.S. does over-prosecute, uh, and I think it's because they can't go after... I'm not going to argue that. It, it, I, don't, I think it's That's because what, exactly we can't get the people... That's exactly what you were arguing. <laughs> oh, I, was I love you, Michael. Hey, Michael, you know what? I've decided we don't have... Michael, we don't have a shortage of security people. We have a shortage of demand, because if that weren't true... People would pay decent wages to AppSec people. Um, there's a, how's that for a tangent? We'll get Ooh. into that one later. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like the needle came off the record right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to I just wanted to punch something that Michael and I agree on violently. Um, no, no, no <laughs> but, but hold on though. I I mean, there, there's two things at issue here. If we're suggesting that we as a global society don't yet understand how to describe and prosecute things like this. I'm in violent oh, agreement. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Do I think that we over uh, that we over prosecute in the U.S. in specific? Yeah, I actually agree with that, too. Do I think, though, that some of these edge cases tend to capture an inordinate amount of attention? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. that's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah, so this kid... Okay, so it turns out you were right after all. So, but in this case of Finland, during yeah. the trial, it became apparent that nobody suffered any significant, if any, damages because of the alleged tax. Oh, there you go. And so that's why they let him the, free. The, the, the crime was against a U.S. company, and... Mm-hmm. Yep. It makes yeah. sense. I know that law sucks, but it is also designed to protect the good... Uh, the citizens from it being abused, even though lawyers and prosecutors have actually found ways to kind of mess it up, especially U.S. ones are kind of experts, uh, like our federal government that decides, hey, if, you this, if you're accused of hacking and we find out that before we actually accuse you, you deleted your browser history, we're going to use um, Sarbanes-Oxley against you because you destroyed evidence. Well, I think it I think it highlights though that there, there's a <laughs> there's a yeah, the, it's gonna I'm gonna completely ignore what Carlos said, but it highlights that there's a <laughs> there is a hundred and eighty degrees uh, difference but be, between between um, the, you know sort of the understanding of the reality versus the hype, right? And I don't even know what I'm saying here, but but part of part of this is <laughs> Isolate that. Clip. Part of this is that the the internet is global by nature, but yet law and jurisdiction jurisdiction yeah, there you go. is yep. directly local, and so right. those two things just don't go together. And the entire world is fighting this. It's not just about the United States. 
everybody's trying to get their heads around this, and they can't. They cannot get their minds around the idea that that somebody on the other side of the planet is going to commit a crime, and what are they going to do about it? It's a no, no, we, no. We can. It's, but you know what? Listen, we we and look, bring it down a level. Bring it just to this industry. We struggle to define the term security researcher. We struggle to define the distinction between good intention and bad intention. We struggle with all these types of things. And to Carlos' point, um, no question that we see prosecutorial overreach and a little bit of zealousness on a regular basis, but they got Al Capone on tax evasion, right, or mail fraud or something. They, they didn't. They didn't get him for all the other things that he did. So people have this tendency to be creative for stuff from time to time. If it goes against what we like or, or our intimate knowledge of something, we decry it. If it's if something that we support, we like, we cheer it and applaud it. I actually think the legal system works. It works slow. It doesn't always work in the way that we like it to. And so the opportunity that we have is to figure out how to start to talk about these things in a somewhat consistent way, translate it so other people understand it, and, and let the laws figure it out. If we can't talk about it consistently within the industry, I'm, I'm not terribly shocked that people outside of the industry can. Well, Holy there's, shit. There's Thank a- you for the setup for a story I did not put in there, but we announced it a couple of days ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Michael, I think you and I spoke about this. Um, talking about things rationally within the industry... Uh, our unkeynote at B-Sides Las Vegas will be a uh, moderated conversation between Wendy Nather and Chris Roberts, Side Dragon. <laughs> and those oh, of you who know those two, um, they are both very smart people. Chris, Side Dragon, um, for those who know you're nodding, for those who don't, let's just say he's not flying United's friendly skies anytime soon. Um, Either either in a straight direction or sideways. Or (laughs) sideways, right. Um, And uh, so they're going to have a conversation about, you know, what's research, uh, what's responsible, not necessarily responsible disclosure. God, I will make sure we don't reignite the disclosure debate but you know what's responsible and what's negligent uh, both from the perspective of um the researcher and the uh software provider so that one we're going to try because michael as you said if we can't have mature conversations uh, inside the industry uh, people outside the industry are going to continue to ignore us including policy and lawmakers and I yeah, would, and I argue, and I would argue that they should ignore us if yeah. we can't. Um, it's going so to here, so uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have any current plans to be there. But here's what I hope I get. I, here's what I hope transpires at that. In any event like this, define your terms. And when you define your term, show me the universality behind it. If you say, well, I got up this morning and I decided a security researcher is a person who, you know, likes Diet Pepsi. And okay, that's useless. Like next, so so it's so what I hope is as part of that that responsible conversation that we need to have more of is that we start to define our terms. You know, I I, th- I think I, I mentioned some of this last week, but I've I've noticed this trend where security is still right. I mean, I get how on one hand what we do is old. And, and there are people that have been doing this as long as I've been alive or longer, so we've, we've got some time under there. Uh, I've been doing it for 20 years. But at the same time, there's a number of people that had to carve their own path, blaze their own trail, and it's worked for them, however they define whatever that success looks like. So we have a lot of people now who stand up and say, but this is my way. No, but, but I'm right, but, but I was successful, but you should do this. And, and we forget that there's a context. We forget that there's a set of conditions. We forget that there's an environmental play to it. And we're all standing up and saying, no, I'm right, instead of saying, what's the, univers- what's the universal truth in this? We need more of that. So I, I love debates like that. I love discussions like that. I like to read stuff like that. But what I would encourage people to do when they participate is to look at or question the definitions and instead of attacking them, strengthen them. Offer the analogs. I, I know we love to think that we're, right, and we open the show with it, we're all a precious snowflake. We're all special. Yeah, it's nice. Here's your ribbon. Now, if you want to be productive in this, <laughs> what we need to do is Figure out what other people have done, right? Oh, you know the story I should have put in. Uh, UL announced that they're going to do a cyber UL. Yeah. So, you know, now, is, is that great? Is that I don't know what it is. What it is is somebody who's got a uh, uh, hundred years of experience doing something saying, hey, we, it's, it's a sim- we've solved this problem a hundred years ago. Let's figure it out now. You know, Good. you know who has a problem right now, though, is hacking team. 
They've got a, a pretty big problem on their well, They should have gone to Finland. Then they'd have no problem, man. I wanted to add two cents on the end of what Mike and, and Jack said because, I, you know, I love doing this. But um, <laughs> the fear, uncertainty, and doubt engine is going to continue inflaming the reaction that feeds the politicians unless we get of out course. there. Of course. Unless we – I'm going to state in the obvious. I know, Mike. Jeez. Unless we get out there and push back against it, Right. So we're going to have to have a public presence of some sort. Uh, in so all of, so at, 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 at the risk of having to tag on everybody else, um, I shared out earlier this week. Uh, I think it was this week. Uh, if not, if somebody needs it, send me an email or tweet me. I'll, I'll look it up, and I'll, if I can, I'll, I'll find it put it in the show notes. The, the, you know the best way to counter uh, disinformation is a better story. A story. We remember stories. You hear people say all the time, we're wired for story. If you think of nothing else, a story's got three pieces. Characters, conflict, resolution. Explain who's involved. Explain the emotion. Explain what the journey looks like, that conflict, and talk about how it ends. If you offer people an alternate ending, if you offer them a pathway that they understand, then we can be more effective at this. The minute we slip into jargon and quick dismissals, ad hominem attacks, we lose them, and, and we lose them forever. Well, and if, if we've just got media people that, that are talking heads without having any kind of uh, expert professional, I hate using those words, but any kind of consultant that's going to help them with the story, then everybody's going to believe the media journalists, folks. I mean, yeah, that's, okay, you know. so, so we're, i, I got to keep tagging on. I, you know, I, I, I've done a bit of work with the media. I've, I've written about this, and I, I, I'll tell you what. There are journalists that care. They've got a very narrow time band, and they, they listen for the things that sound interesting to them, and then they push with it. You can so, go in totally prepped, and unless you're like superstar quality, uh, it, it's tough. I mean, I think Dave Kennedy does a phenomenal job online, but I, there's still times I look at it, I'm like, wow, could have said that different, could have done that different. So, th yeah, no, look, you're, you're right. There's a challenge to it. Um, th there's we, we have a lot of challenges. I'll, I'll tell you something I'd love to do. If anybody is going to be on TV – and they want to go through speaking points or prep, hit me up, shoot me something on Twitter, send me an email, I'll help you. Um, I'll help you at least distill your thoughts and think about how to pivot. Because to your point, that's how we can start to get the, the messages out better. But Mike, can you help hacking team? They are beyond my help, pal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I took, a look, their, anyone... I, looked at, I took a look at their passwords and yeah. I went, okay. <laughs> really Not bad. Me. Um does anyone want to comment on the hacking team thing? I only know what I read on the internet. I don't know. There's so much to comment about it. <laughs> yeah. well, it was first, on the internet. First of all, um, I wonder how many people are owned inside out, upside down by about 20 different governments and hacking crews uh, because they downloaded 400 gigs of stuff and did it in a dumb way and played it in a dumb environment without OPSEC. Oh. <laughs> just, yeah, Jack just and I saying. were talking about yeah. the best way to own a researcher. Yeah, just grab the. Now you're talking team about hacking team, just... not OPM breaching all the fingerprints, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're I just like get confused this... sometimes. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the hacking team, the Italian company, uh, very shady the stuff. They got popped. All of their stuff got stolen. Um, they they have been owned since January, and um, they were using for password the word password. With the AS of four and the zero uh, and the OS of zero, almost everywhere. Um, That's because they're lead hacksaws. Yeah, fr from the output that the guy that hacked them, he was using an interpreter, so he actually was using Metasploit to actually record their audio, take screenshots, download all of their files, uh, extract their over four hundred gigs. They never noticed the traffic going out. Um, they kept all of their passwords inside of their browser, which actually kind of even makes it sadder. Um, on Wait, the other like side, using like the, the Firefox password store, Carlos? Yeah, and, and, and then to even make it, uh, to, to, to go to the other side, we're, uh, we're kind of, uh, everybody kind of got excited, oh, let's download all of this information. Well, we're, you're downloading, like it or not, they're still a company, they get, they get owned, uh, they get breached, and you're actually downloading a bunch of stolen data from a legal company and I'm putting it in quotes, which I find kind of uh, interesting so that no, 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 that nobody kind of brought it up. Yeah, nobody kind of brought that up that they, they're kind of a victim here, even though they're shady. Um, but I would kind of there, justify There were a few people that, that did. And I think one of the challenges here um, is that uh, 
they're despicable individuals. I mean, it, it's it's yeah. there's really no way to get around it's that. Like, it's is like that, the is that they're they're Vinci phone. software. It, it's yeah. um, you, you know, it's, if you support the Sudanese government, um, fuck you. I'm sorry. It just we're, we're done. <laughs> right? yeah. You know that. The, you can be really geopolitical feel, tonight. You can, I'm you saying, can have a conversation and, about, and, 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 you know, and so not even com- that. Yeah, well, com- countries like Bahrain or Morocco or other places that have, you know, a bunch of these countries have used uh, this software from hacking team against journalists and other things that we mm-hmm. find reprehensible. Yep. But if you willingly sell to governments that mm-hmm. commit genocide against their own citizens, it's like, you know, you're and to death I, you're, yeah you're <laughs> probably not a nice person that doesn't give us an excuse to to you know rifle to through them. their belongings yeah. but it's really hard to feel as bad for them as victims as you should mm-hmm. you know that's just you know schadenfreude it's just it's it is it feels so good to watch them suffer and I yeah. get that that's a you know that's a character flaw, and it's just. Shania says they, they might not recover from this. No, they, 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 I, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt <laughs> well, they, well they, they have no more intellectual property left. It's all on GitHub. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and and apparently, that's been taken down, but it's all leaked. Yeah, it's all leaked. One of the modules for the evidence collection of their malware actually has a sub module that injects evidence, and it injects by default, pedophile videos over to your target that then can be used to frame that target. Wow. That is one of the modules they were selling uh, that they had available to the FBI, DEA. Let's not forget that our own government is buying this shit. Wait, right. I, I so put a link you, in. If they, were uplo- if, if they were uploading vi- videos uh, of pedophilia, and they were in possession of said videos yes. to be uploaded. Yep, absolutely, aren't they in violation of law? And the people that they sold it to it, in violation. Investigations of some... yeah. have started. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where they go. Another I, I angle mean, part is that everything was backdoored, and they actually were using the variable backdoor right in their own system. <laughs> yeah, it, what they were it's selling. Just, it, it's it's a litany of failure. And um, actually, Patrick Gray raised the question of um, how many legitimate governments would continue to do business with them knowing what we know now about right. their security model, uh, about their violation of bans, uh, sales bans, um, things like that. You know, so and that, that they're selling you malware which is actually backdoored so they can get access to the people that you're owning also. So it, it'll be interesting to see if they survive this. And, mm. and they're, defiant, they're defiantly defensive of what they've done. I mean, yeah. you know, they say they're not selling I, I, weapons. I have to say, that their, their Flash O-Day is uh, quite a nice one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I, that was like their their one trick, though, right? I mean, they do a lot of stuff they purchased. But you know, who knows? It'll be interesting to watch how this plays. Uh, and, yeah, it's not – it's another one where uh, – Now, right, but since, fr- from the defender side, we can actually learn quite a lot from it. Number one, we can yes. analyze their malware. Yes. How is it being used? For one, they were using fake – passports to buy code signing certificates and then signing their own drivers in malware, which is super interesting there. A lot of people just go, no, 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 I have Windows and Windows 8 or Windows 10. Uh, it actually checks for sign stuff. Yeah, but don't don't trust it. Part of the IR response is look for anything that has a self-signed certificate. Yeah, but also look at the signed stuff. Now we're seeing that signed certificates is not that Kind of cool. Back to Whoa. the stuff. That is a and, cocktail. Oh, that's and crazy. you, you, you add to all of this. Uh, also, as a company, you now you can see how you can get owned. Somebody can get into your machines, turn on microphones, listen to what you're doing, take screenshots. Where are you download, downloading all of your information? If you're using management software that actually is not encrypting all of the passwords. For example, they got all of their uh, Firefox passwords from all of their system management systems. They kept all of their passwords for their uh, Linux stuff inside of WinSCP. So they dump all of that stuff from WinSCP and they got all the password from there. 
you here, you have a very good, nice blueprint on how yourself can get owned and where can you protect yourself. You need to make it harder for the attacker each step that he takes inside of your network. Well, and not use Flash, apparently. Yeah. So when we, well, you guys know, I, I like to ask the questions about what's the problem we're trying to solve, how important is this? What I'm hearing is this is very much an inside baseball story. This is interesting for us. There is plenty to learn. Some will revel in the delight of the destruction of a otherwise shady company. But this is probably not the example you want to use with your executives. This is probably not well, the example you use with the board of directors. No, I, I think it is. One of the things I would highlight, Mike, is the fact that they were harboring a flash zero day and described it as a beautiful flash zero day. And uh, Carlos, I don't know if you were kidding or serious when you said that it was a nice uh, exploit. No, it, particular it, it, uh, like it was from, a from really a technical reliable stand, one. Yeah. From a technical standpoint, it is a nice one. Yeah. So from the, a technical standpoint, the takeaway for the board and your executives for this one, Mike, is that bad people have exploits for vulnerabilities in software that you may never know about. And, you need to take that into account when you're designing your security architecture. It's, you know, making sure you're only running software you should run, making sure there's multiple levels of defense, making okay. sure that you're like not it. trying to do prevention, but uh, not just detection, but prevention uh, as well. You know, the whole the whole thing is important. But, but We're not steer, just trying to defend what we know clear about. clear of whether they're scumbags or not. Yeah, steer clear of anything. That's, just yeah, say, yeah. here's what yeah. we learned from it. Right. There's yeah, companies that and also they, they sell the governments, their, they sell their stuff. Their uh, they're a great example of password reuse. They were using the same password or variations of the same password yeah. everywhere. So that made uh, moving laterally in their network super easy because the guy just needed the guy could have uh, the guy dumped their hashes. Cool, let me crack them, but let me get the other applications that are here, which I actually can get the clear text passwords if I'm not able to get system or administrate on the boxes. And all of a sudden, they're going like, oh. WinSCP, hmm, here I have a couple of clear text passwords and username. Oh, here's the entire history from Firefox. Oh, cool. They're, he's using clear text. Uh, here I have the clear text password, same username, same password repeated as WinSCP. Let me try it on the Windows host. Oh, they work. They're the same. So here you <laughs> Larry, have good, Larry, a good kinda, example of kinda sounds like the passwords and all that stuff. Kind of sounds like the description from some of your penetration tests, right? That password <laughs> reuse never happens on your pen <laughs> test, right? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> Never. Anytime so, I've done, anytime I've done penetration testing, password reuse is one of the things that ninety nine percent of the time, Larry, you find some of it, right? I mean, maybe a hundred. Yes. yes. Oh, it's incredibly valuable. I mean, your password reuse is is like huge mm -hmm. in pen tests. Huge. Enough I mean, said. for my own personal opsec, um, adopting LastPass has been a, a, a big lesson for me. I kind of. Uh, as much as there are security trade-offs there, it does cut down on password reuse. I, I like that feature, Jack, where it tells you, hey, if you're using this password on this website, I found you're using it on another website, right. you should fix that. Right. And it makes it easy for you to do that. Right. So, And it does, if you have a lot of passwords, it does take a little bit of work. You run through it and it's like, oh, that's because... Yeah, you, it's, the law. You know, it's, the number of logins you have it's the, unavoidable. The, the, right, it, it, but I mean, it, not just that. But you know, this one website will you'll enter through two different URLs depending yeah. on which link you and click. Yeah. You know, and it, it. But it makes it easy to figure that out. Yeah, it, and it makes it um, easier to keep track. And, and as I said, it. it, it yeah. But, it makes it easier to do the right thing. There is a trade-off there, but you end up with hundreds of better passwords. Yes, that are different. A and if you do use their tools, they'll you know like say, hey, uh, you haven't changed these six passwords since these six companies were popped. Right. Right. Like, okay. Oh, right. So we're so what you're suggesting is we're improving the experience and we're making it easier for people to do the right thing. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and also you can take this as an, as an example when you go to a company and they're going, well, if I get owned, it's not going to affect me that much. Here's an example of a company that gets owned and pretty certain that they're going to go away. They need, they're going to have to change names, their reputations through the, uh, through the mud. After, well deserved, after everything but, that's come uh, out, um, if uh, if you run into anybody at DEFCON and you say and you introduce yourself and they say, 
I'm so and so. Um, it's like, oh, I, I work at Tenable. Oh, I, I work at Hacking Team. Um, that's not going to go over well in a couple of weeks when we're all at DEF CON. I, I think there will yeah, be a lot yeah. of people there. And, 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 and this is the example you can actually use in those meetings with uh, the key holders of a company. Like, you want to see an example of a company getting owned and getting owned so bad that they went out of business? Here's an example. Ah, oh, by the way, they're a security company. Uh, which. We have a saying here in Puerto Rico, which is "casa de herrero, cuchillo de palo," blacksmith home, wooden knives. Right. Which actually fits perfectly. They're, they're a security company. They know how to own people, and they know all of the ways of doing it. Cobbler's but when it came to their internal security, it was wow, amateurish at best. Yeah, and it is interesting that um, you know not to ignite red versus blue and other artificial constructs, but it is interesting that uh, you know a company completely focused on offensive technology uh, didn't get the fundamentals of defensive technology right. Mm -hmm. Not that not that opsec is easy, right? <clears throat> but there's, hey, there's you, making there's making right. a few mistakes, no, right. yeah. and then there's. Holy You're crap! Like just grossly this ignoring us. This is gross negligence, yeah. right? So the story we're not doing. We need to, you know, in DMC, security one hundred and one, infosec one hundred and one, right? Well, we can take what they did wrong, and there's a good starting point for the <laughs> infosec one hundred and one, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Um, DMZ and headless chickens. Did you guys see that story? What a segue! You like <laughs> that? I wasn't done yet. Oh, sorry, Kevin. That's what she yeah, said. Ke Ke Kevin hasn't finished the whole chicken yet. That's what, <laughs> wait, that's what she said? What, not done yet? Um. You know, I, Gunner's, Gunner's posts are awesome. Yes, they They're are. They're really hard to talk about on the show because you have to put so much thought. Like, it requires yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% it's, of my CPU there's, there isn't, yeah. to, to read them. <laughs> There, there isn't a sound bite and punchline no. with Gunner posts. No, there, there isn't. Is not I found that I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, we have to talk about the story. I'm like, but just I, my CPU's I, pegged at a hundred trying to read it. Well, you know? read, so he needed read. One, he he needs an editor or he needs to distill better. Is what he you're needs saying? to get on Twitter lightly. No, no, he's on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he, it's he's, he, we've he had has, him on the show before, but his posts are different. I wouldn't say he's, he's his posts are different. They're, like, they're yeah. not one on one. Yeah, they're not one on one. They're not one on one. And, and he knows who his audience is, and he uh, writes to his audience, and his audience gets it. Because I, I mean, where I see his stuff discussed, it's people who understand. It's not the most approachable stuff in the world all the time. It's not. A, it's not unfathomable, but uh, it's. So he it quote, does require he, some. He cycles. has a quote from John Lambert, and we can just riff off this one point. You should go read the article. The link is in the show note. The show notes. Um, it's one raindrop is his blog, DMZ and headless chickens. And he talks about the fox, the weasel, and the raccoon always find their way into the, the coop. But then he follows it up with some, uh, a, a whole bunch of stuff. But one of the quotes is, defenders think in lists. Attackers think in graphs. As long as this is true, attackers win. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. So he puts the kind of stuff like that in his post, Mike. And now you can interpret that in a lot of different ways. And sure. He has several paragraphs that kind of you he know, also, plays up that one point. He also quotes uh, Brian Snow in there, which he is does. one of Brian's. He does. One of Brian's points is that um, actually, if it's there, you can read it. So Brian Snow says the worst thing is not being secure; it's assuming you are secure. Right. It's being insecure, right. acting accordingly right. when it's, in fact you are not right. secure. So the, the worst thing is not being insecure. The worst thing is thinking, thinking you're, secure. you're secure. So thinking you're secure is worse than being insecure and knowing it. Mm -hmm. And that's um, that. You know, that's not. Uh, uh, Sound bite that requires you know that you're like huh oh I see yeah. where he's going right, right. yeah but it's, it's distracting though to talk about lists graphs and then say checklists but and, and chickens in the coop but, but what I mean it's it's yeah. interesting right I it's mean, hard it's, it, well it's hard to dissect and, and parse that properly because um, uh, people are going to have depending on their education and background. People are going to have different interpretation of list and graph, right? That, well, that, mean, that's what it is, Jock. It, it, my yeah. mind goes in different. I mean, I have ADD, but my mind goes in different directions, and I, have, well, right. I, 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 mean, I draw parallels you know, to different things when I read the things when, in his post. But I, I find them to I be insightful that, when, because I, it makes me think about things differently when I read his posts. It, it, it does, and I think it, it does bring bring forth thought, but it is not. Uh, it's certainly not a one liner kind of media yeah. statement. It's and, not. And which it's, is, it's, which is what Mike was saying, you know. Yes, yeah. it's not a cohesive thought that you know happens instantaneously. 
Yeah, well, I mean, just so we're clear, I don't, I don't know Gunner, uh, right? I just, you guys know, right? I, I, I do yeah. communication for a living, and one of the things I do is I break down communication. So when I hear somebody say, "Oh man, I had to go listen to that four times before I got it," man, you got to really sit down and read that. That's a flag for if they had edited a little bit better, mm-hmm. or if they had distilled their mm-hmm. thoughts, if they had I, tightened it up. I think be that that's all. That's there's, all. But, but, I, this there's, is the, on the, I'm making that. a general comment right. no, to a there's, specific there's, comment. Right. There, there's it. there's value in that, but there's also um, you know, don't don't pick up the the fourth year textbook in your first year. No argument. Well, uh, that, that that's and, exactly and again, it. It's I, I'll tell you, actually, the, the best thing I've pulled out of this so far is is talking about headless chickens. I, I don't mean the graphic nature of it, but I, I know people who <laughs> have done exactly the opening. Right. They they get their chicken coop. They've got the chickens. They're all excited. They're mm-hmm. talking about their fresh eggs, and then either the whatever gets in and kills them. One gets away. Uh, I've got friends that it gets trapped in a car. It dies. It heats up. Like, all sorts of things happen to it. What a I mean that is a great opportunity to have good basic conversations. Whether you want to go into talking about lists versus graphs, checkers versus check chess, uh, checklists versus whatever the alternative is, DMZs are like fine, go anywhere you want with it. But I'll tell you what, that's a great opening, and, and it's a good opportunity because people have seen that, and then you get to, then you get to start talking about costs and trade offs. And well, the chickens are, are cheap to buy. Okay, but what's the value of your time? What do you have to do to protect it? How many layers is fair? At what point is it unusable? Gosh, you could go all day with but, that. So I, great. I think about the uh, graphs and list thing as very much being on the attacking side and the people on the defender side. The defender side, you tend to you tend to out of necessity want to think in checklists. Like I have these systems, I have these applications, I have this network, I have to secure it. Okay, I want to make sure that I do this, this, and this, and I get stuck on my checklist. The attacker comes in, like Joff, Larry, myself, come and do a penetration test, and you look at the whole big picture, and you're looking at the graph, and you're like, I, I vividly remember Mike Poor again, his name's going to come up again, when he's like, you know, I go and I do consulting, and I, they give me the network map, and I just kind of look at it, and then I take my pen and be like, what's that? And that would be like this path on the graph that would go in, and eventually when you went through the threat modeling, would be like, wow, if someone followed that path, like really bad things would happen. But the defenders are very much on the, like, well, we have a firewall, we have an IDS, you know, we do this, we do this, and we do this, but they're not stepping back and looking at that graph picture and going, oh, these are my, the different paths in and we could do this differently. Sure, it's forest and trees. I totally get it. Yes, exactly. It is, and, and, and it's back to that construct of that uh, Defenders, defenders by necessity have to hit things a hundred percent, and so the thinking tends to go serialized. The yes. thinking tends to go a good point, list based yeah. because they mm-hmm. don't have another way to approach it. It's right. like I've got to get through all these things because I've got to be a hundred percent there. And right. well, I, it, it's a breadth first versus depth. I think first. that's a false choice, though. I think no, we've sold because ourselves as, that. as an attacker, though, I, if I have a, a list, it's going to take me a really long time to get through my list. Right, I've got to use some analytics. I've got to look at some graphs. I've got to visualize stuff differently to understand where the right paths are. I can't just go. A lot of people say, "Well, you know, what does my my checklist or my pen test look like?" I'm like, "No, dude, totally wrong. <laughs> There's no like list. There's no set of tools. Like, you got to analyze." Yeah, but you well, but I'd be willing to bet though. Still though, you you have either an, an internal systems thinking ability to you. Or you have some sort of a, a categorized process that you follow. Is it a checklist? No, I buy that. By the way, right? I, we we misinterpret the purpose of checklists, and that's that's a whole debate for another day. So well, what I'm, I'm saying in is complete checklist, agreement with that checklists here. Checklists suck, Mike. Is what I'm saying. Well, no, I think well, most of the free world agrees with you. <laughs> except most of the free for, world agrees because they they do them wrong and um, agreed. That and looked, I wouldn't and I wouldn't fly if it weren't for checklists. Well, well, that's, and, well, that's a good use case and, for it. And, right? and, and, there's certain and the idea where you want and, to have the checklist, yeah, and, and the idea of things. a linear checklist is is where people get lost because if you think of lists as maps rather that's than different to that's linear there you go. list, no. what is what uh, is this? I, we have thing. to end yeah, the show. This thing we that, have to end the show. What is this thing that we're drinking? Okay, so this is the most interesting cocktail <laughs> this, I've ever had. This is actually a whiskey sour. Boston style. Boston. Boston style. Boston, Boston style. It is. It is outstanding. Uh, we're out of time, but I've got to say, I've got notes. Oh, we got. Um, we, so we got we a went plug, to plug Aaron's uh, thing. Aaron. Um, Aaron Crawford. Aaron Crawford and Dichotomy: The Pros versus Joe Capture the Flag at B Sides Las Vegas. Uh, it's structured to make it really easy to 
uh, without CTF experience, learn how the games are played, get in, learn a lot, work with pros and with Joes, and to make it really interesting this year, the Pros versus Joes CTF at B-Sides Vegas is uh, teaming up with Aaron Crawford and the Social Engineering Capture the Flag. There's a bunch of cool stuff happening. Um, look in the show notes. You'll find the links. Maybe we'll talk about it another week or so uh, in a little more depth. I won't be here next week. I'll be in Chicago drinking tiki drinks probably. Nice. I want to thank Grant. Grant, thank you for Grant, coming to the thank studio. You for do you want to come make an appearance? you want to come say hi in the camera? No, right, Grant's, he's, he's, Grant's all he's the way from across 5, the, miles from home across so, the yeah. pond, came here to, to watch. He's behind the scenes. He gets the behind the scenes look he's, at, he's at Security at, Weekly. We thank he's, you. He's, he's, got, he's looking at the upscore cameras and everything. That's right. He gets to watch us live tonight. So thanks for coming down for your support, for listening, for all of our Apo- listeners and Apollo, viewers. Apollo, thank you, sir. Apollo, thank you. Cheers, guys. For the most interesting cocktail I think I've ever had. Anytime. Always interesting with egg, is it egg whites, right? It is. Very nice. Thanks, everyone, in lines via Skype. Yay. Larry, Larry, do the over and out. Oh, Thanks, yeah. Oh, hey, Love yeah. Me. Hold on. Hold on. Ready? <laughs> I just see you eating a can't see you, rooter. Larry. What? We can't huh? see you. I just see you eating oh. a rooter. Oh. Hurry up. Oh. The music's going to end. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. er, come on, music. We won't because this is requires a visual. Come on. There we go. Right, here it is. Over and out. Beautifully done. <laughs> Egg whites, that reminds me of something. Yeah. Were you going to say sperm? Man,